German Expressionism, in short, was a movement that allowed artists and filmmakers alike to express themselves, projecting the way they saw the world and their emotions towards it, compared to showing it realistically as it directly is. The movement allowed artists and filmmakers to create warped and distorted visuals that used geometrical shapes and masses of colour. The German Expressionist movement started within paintings and sculpture before the First World War. This art would concentrate and celebrate the natural world and its spirituality. But with the chaos stricken among them during World War I and the economic, political and social chaos found in Germany after the war, many artists began to express themselves through their artwork, using their innermost emotions towards the brutality of everyday life as metaphors for their art form. At the start of World War I, Germany's film industry was small and was mostly playing foreign films. These foreign countries banned German films instantly. Germany, without any solid position, were constricted from doing the same. Germany's government began to support the film industry to combat imported competition by creating propaganda films. In 1916, Germany was able to ban all film exports except those of the neutral Denmark. In 1917, Several small film companies created the UFA to promote pro-war films, and with considerable financial backing, the UFA was able to gather outstanding technicians to build what would be the best equipped studios within Europe. In 1918, with the end of the war, Germany managed to break into the international market by creating historical epics such as Ernst Lubitz's Madame de Berry, a French Revolution epic that opened the UFA Palace Theatre in Berlin. One small company, Eric Palmer's Decla, which remained independent after the war, gave birth to the German Expressionist movement within filmmaking in 1919, when two unknown writers, Karl Mayer and Hans Janowitz, created an unusual script for a film called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The young writers wanted the film to be styled within an odd way. This is when the Expressionist style was suggested by three designers. The company agreed to try the style within the cinema, as they believed it may be a selling point towards the international market. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was directed by Robert Greene and was released in 1920. The film follows one Dr. Caligari who hypnotises his morbid assistant, Caesar, to kill for him. The sets for the film are distorted, stretched and feature many diagonal lines and bizarre angles that are unrealistic, so that they become paintings of emotional states. These settings include buildings and landscapes that are painted on with chilling gothic themes, and the director, Robert Green, intensifies these with stark contrasts between light and shadow. Many of the elements associated with German Expressionism can be found within the film. These are surreal settings, distorted landscapes, heavy use of light and shadow, dreamlike, an atmosphere of depression and or insanity, and themes of horror, death and dark fantasy. With dreamlike sequences and weird distorted painted set designs, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari follows most of these elements, with characters who have exaggerated makeup and costumes and moving jerky or slow sinuous patterns, creating a hit sensation within Germany and later the rest of the world. With this success, other films of the Expressionist style began to rise, beginning an imaginative movement that would last several years. With German Expressionism becoming more and more popular, a certain style became clear. Films that followed the movement relied heavily on mise en scene, eerie atmospheres and composition, and so concentrated less on editing and story techniques. Also, as Herman Warm said, the film image must become graphic art. This would be through unrealistic and distorted painted sets, 
The characters of these films would have overly exaggerated performances that would match the style of their settings. This was done on purpose by the actors as moving in a natural behaviour was against the German Expressionist method, which states that you must not just record reality but alter and modify it. Films within the movement would also focus on themes such as the supernatural, insanity and betrayal. Many of the films worked on a low budget due to the economic environment of the time, but later the films would start to use higher budgets. One of the expressionist films that rose from Caligari's glory was F.W. Morneau's Nosferatu, an unauthorised version of Bram Stoker's Dracula, released in 1922. The film is about a vampire called Count Orlock, who lures an estate agent to his Transylvania castle, where he becomes obsessed with the man's wife. Nosferatu was not an immediate success due to copyright issues, but after World War II it gained classic status and has been a tremendous success till today. While being a film of German Expressionism, Nosferatu does not contain as much of the exaggerated and distorted sets of other films of the movement. However, it does contain numerous compositions where character will blend into their surroundings, for example, when Count Orlok transcends the staircase, the character is blended into the setting by the use of his shadow against the wall. Morno's film used shadow play, sped up film, negatives, transparencies and montages to tell its story. The film also used some naturalism, which combined with its expressionism helped heighten the film's horror and suspense. Some other notable films of the movement are Paul Wegner's The Golem in 1920, which is a story by a giant clay creature that protects the Jews of Prague from torment. There is also F.W. Morneau's The Last Laugh from 1924, which follows a doorman who thinks highly of himself, who after his emotion is forced to face the scorn of his friends and neighbours. Another is The Hands of Orlock by Robert Reen in 1924. A pianist who loses his hands in a tragic accident has them replaced with those of a murderer. And then there's Fritz Lang's Destiny in 1921, which is by a man who is abducted by death and trapped away. His fiancée looking for him is met by death, who tells of three stories of women who were within the same circumstances. Within the 1920s, German films became regarded as some of the best, and with Germany's extensive inflation, expressive filmmaking became favoured due to exporters being able to sell films cheaply abroad. Germany's exchange rate made it excessively expensive to import foreign films, but in 1924 the US Dorps plan helped stabilise their economy and foreign films began to appear more often, giving German filmmakers a competition they hadn't seen for almost a decade. However, expressionist film budgets began to rise and the last major films of the movement drove the UFA into financial difficulty, which led to many filmmakers and personnel to leave the country for America. One of the major films of the movement towards the end was F.W. Morneau's Forced, released in 1926, which tells of a demon who rages with God that he could corrupt a mortal man's soul. This film, being of a higher budget, had hundreds of actors and extravagant set pieces, and in many ways was Morneau's expressionist success, as it, unlike his Nosferatu, abandoned any sense of naturalism. Eric Rommer had said that Morneau's force was light the model's form, that sculpts it, and that the film's world was as true and beautiful as a painting. 
Frost, like Nosferatu again, uses shadows to bring menace to its monsters, and also uses light to its advantage. After finishing Frost, Mono left the country. 1927 marked the end of the movement, as German filmmakers began to imitate the products of America, diluting the unique qualities of the expressionist style in filmmaking. And as many of the movement's filmmakers left for the US states or lost interest within the style. In 1927, Fritz Lang was the only major expressionist filmmaker established within Germany, and he made one of his last expressionist films, which was also essentially the movement's last. This film was called Metropolis, set in a futuristic city with divides between its working class and the city's planners. The city's mastermind son falls in love with a working class girl who predicts the coming of a saviour who will mediate their differences. The plot of Metropolis wasn't its strong point, as it was clumsy and confusing, as were its themes. And even the film's director Fritz Lang had said in an interview that he found the film silly and stupid. But it was the film's composition and visuals that created extravagant and meticulous settings, which had never been seen before in cinema. When opening in Berlin in 1927, the film gained a large interest but failed to re-earn its investment, and the reactions and reviews of its audience were mixed from the very beginning. With this moderate success, the film began to be forgotten and many of its cuts were lost over time. However, eventually, in more recent years, the film began to be recognised for its remarkable settings. The film has become one of the most famous German Expressionist films and is also considered one of the finest sci-fi films to have ever been made. The settings for the film boast an Expressionist architecture which is organised, solid and spreads out of two dimensions, rebelling against the distortion of the style used for Caligari. In Metropolis, a photographer Eugene Shufton used a two-lens camera to focus two separate images onto one strip. This allowed Lang to record actors and models together, without having to use double exposure or having to do work within a lab. The film also uses silhouettes to express within certain scenes. After the end of the movement, an expressionist tendency still lingered on within German films of the late 20s and early 30s, most notably within Fritz Lang's films M in 1931 and The Testament of Dr. Mabuse in 1933. However, with many German filmmakers fleeing to America and their films finally being seen overseas, echoes of the expressionist style became apparent within many of Universal's horror films of the late 1920s and 30s creating dark and twisted settings and using lighting to an advantage. The expressionist style also influenced Alfred Hitchcock within his works after he had worked in Germany for the UFA as an assistant director and art director. Hitchcock once said, I have acquired a strong German influence by working at the UFA studios Berlin. This influence on Hitchcock was immediately obvious in his set designs for the film The Black Ground. Many of his films show this expressionist style through his use of light and shadow and within his themes, that like the films of the German expressionist movement, followed themes of madness and paranoia. Hitchcock in turn has influenced many of today's filmmakers and has become one of the main reasons that an expressionist tendency still lives on within modern cinema. The expressionist style also helped to start the film noir movement within America. This movement's films had many of the techniques and themes present within German Expressionist cinema and used lighting to create a contrast between shadow and light. The film Citizen Kane followed a character who was disillusioned by the world around him, very similarly to many of the protagonists within the works of German Expressionism. In modern day, the Expressionist style has been used by many. The most well-known uses are by Ridley Scott within his film Blade Runner, which follows many of the same themes and contains simulations of many of the set pieces within Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Tim Burton has also widely been influenced by the expressionist style, using it within many of his works, most notably the film Edward Scissorhands, who in fact is inspired by the character Caesar 
from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. In conclusion, the German Expressionist movement was born out of war and chaos, and featured many successful and remarkable films, such as The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Metropolis. However, with social and economic problems within the country, the movement struggled to stay alive and many of the iconic German filmmakers of the 1920s were forced to abandon the movement, leaving it at a halt in 1927. But with these German filmmakers moving to America, expressionist tendencies were able to live on within horror movies of the 30s and into the modern cinematic world. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that in the future German Expressionist Cinema can have an influence on your ideas and or films.